Trump's double-digit edge on handling inflation and the economy is seen in poll after poll. And of all the Democrats spin out there to explain the state of things, I think this could be my favorite. I am still at the point when I walk through the grocery store, people come up to me and grab my hand and say, we're going to be okay, aren't we? He won't win, will he? Um, you know, they won't let him back in the Oval Office, will they? So I do think there is a level of panic out there because some people who look at all the facts and circumstances go, wait a minute, how could this be tied? Right? How could this be tied after everything that has occurred? Let me just say, I do not believe one person has come up to Claire McCaskill at the grocery store to say anything of the sort. If anything, they're asking her if they even recognize her. Why under Biden have the price of eggs gone from what, two, 10 a dozen to four bucks a dozen? And on and on and on. This is and never has been a comms or a PR problem for Biden and the Democrats. It's been a policy problem. They've spent, borrowed and printed money and then pretended like the law of economics somehow doesn't apply to them. They've left the border open. They got us bogged down in a proxy war over in Ukraine. And then they left us weaker at home and abroad. Well, some of the less clueless liberals are beginning to see the writing on the wall. The question is not just how could this be tied. The question is not just, to Amy's point, how could Trump be ahead? I think the question is, you know, if some of these trend lines hold, we need to accommodate ourselves to the reality that Trump could not just win, but could win very comfortably, right? Like, that's something that nobody seems comfortable saying out loud, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Joining me now, Kellyanne Conway, former senior counselor to President Trump, Fox News contributor, as well as Matt Towery, a political analyst, pollster, and chair of Insider Advantage. Kellyanne, let's start with you. In, in some of these swing state polls, 14% of those who voted for Biden in 2020 say they are not backing him now. And one voter even told the Times that backing Biden was the biggest mistake of his life. So is yes. this just, this is it's no longer anecdotal, right? This, this is a trend no. that has really not been deviated from for a long, long while now. For a while, Laura, actually, Joe Biden lost independence after the chaotic, inexcusable withdrawal from Afghanistan and has never won them back in anyone's polling. He's never been on top approval versus disapproval among independents. But when you listen to folks who actually voted for Biden say they're going to vote for Trump, they're very clear headed and concise as to why that is. The New York Times report showed it has an awful lot to do with the economy, inflation. Just the cost of everyday life has become increasingly unaffordable. They blame the guy in charge for that. Uh, and when they, when Karine Jean-Pierre says, you know, gas is down 15 cents, groceries are down 2%, people are saying, excuse me, housing costs and core, the CPI, core inflation, when we are trying to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, put a roof over our heads, that's up close to 20%. The Wall Street Journal had an unbelievable set of graphs today everybody should look at demonstrating this. Also, the flip side, the Biden voters, the hardcore Biden voters who are going to vote for him again, in the, according to the New York Times, they tend to be white. They tend to be abortion voters. They tend to be against Trump, not for Biden. So Biden has failed to knit together a coalition that can actually support him and feel enthusiastic about it. And the reason Claire McCaskill doesn't think this is real, that the numbers don't add up, is because she lives in a parallel universe to the one the rest of us live in. There are more voters than elites. Take it to the yeah. bank. Now, new polling from CBS, Matt, has Trump leading Biden by five points in Arizona, but the White House is banking on one issue that it believes can turn the tide. Arizona, we're looking at the issues of the economy and inflation driving the vote there. 82% of voters in Arizona, 78%, they say those issues are top of mind. But all is not lost for President Biden. They look at that third issue in Arizona, the state of democracy, mm -hmm. and they say there are many Democrats, independents, and Republicans, those John McCain-style Republicans in Arizona, who may look at President Biden and say he's a more stable choice. What happened to Bob Costa? That's the question. All right, the state of democracy. Is that what people are thinking of when they go to the polls in November, Matt? By any stretch of the imagination. Oh. Laura, as the uh, usual doctor no and negative about the Republicans, I have to tell you, the tide is turning. Well, Kellyanne nailed it. It's the economy in almost all of these locations. And I see even the suburbs are beginning to move in the direction of Trump, which everybody thought suburbs would never move. I don't think democracy is an issue, except if you're watching this trial on television, because the trial and the coverage of it 
probably is causing more people to have sympathy for Donald Trump than any one issue I've ever seen. And if he's convicted, it, it will probably win him the White House. It's phenomenal the way I, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio right now. I've talked to people on the street that I don't know that well. This trial, no one thinks it's fair. And so they're kidding themselves. If they think that somehow democracy is a threat with Donald Trump, they're watching it right now in New York. Well, Kellyanne, the thing that's wild about this is that they, they keep doubling down on failure. Usually, like the smart politicians, Obama yes. did this and Clinton, they pivoted and they pivoted credibly. Yes. But the, other than the tariffs on some of the Chinese goods, they, they're all talking no pivot. No pivot. And you saw that in the State of the Union, Laura, that was a great chance for Joe Biden to reset, to define what he would do as president in this last year and what he would do in his second term. And instead, it was this insistence that the rest of us and what we see is wrong. What they say is correct. And that's not working. Look, there's not a single issue in the top five, excluding abortion, where Joe Biden is beating Donald Trump. In fact, Trump's wow. beating him by double digits. The horse race, the horse race numbers are one thing. To have one candidate beating the other by double digits on inflation, in the economy, on um, on the border and my and migrants, immigrants. I mean, that is remarkable because we don't tell voters what's important to them. They tell us, and they're telling us. I think the issue set is very clear, and it's not apt to change. And Laura. Matt, this is why you see Donald Trump expanding his map. He is outside the margin of error in Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada right now, the more diverse states of the swing states. He's tighter with Biden, although ahead in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, the whiter states. That's the irony. It's like Joe Biden all of a sudden has the whiter coalition. Trump's yeah. expanding his map. Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire. Where is Biden expanding? All right, Kelly and Matt, thank you so much, both of you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.